it's not much of an overstatement to say that 2020 has been kind of an underwhelming year for Nokia fans here in India. But can HMD Global turn it around with their latest release? Well, let's find out in today's unboxing. Hey guys, over to here from C4E Tech and this is my unboxing of the Nokia 2.4. So if you do end up liking the video, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon so that you get to be a part of our notification squad. We have the typical Nokia box here, flatter than most other phone boxes, but also wider. Anyway, we have the usual picture of the phone along with some branding on the front. To the bottom, we get the Nokia promise, two years of Android upgrades. That's one of the biggest pluses of owning a Nokia device, stock Android plus updates. I'll get into the software in a bit. First, let me continue with the unboxing. The back has some of the spec highlights and we also get the MRP, 11,499. Let's now slice through that seal and get this box open. First thing inside the box is the Nokia 2.4, wrapped in protective plastic film. Let's get rid of that. We have the Nokia 2.4 in charcoal. That's what HMD Global is calling this matte grey finish. But there are two other color choices as well, Ford and Dusk. Switching it on for the first time, this is gonna take a while, so let's quickly take a look at the other stuff. We get a SIM ejector pin, a quick start guide, and some product safety info. A clear soft case fits the phone nice and snug a tiny 5 watt charger and the last thing in the box, a micro USB cable. Now, if a 5 watt charger wasn't bad enough, the micro USB cable, that just adds to the disappointment. Coming back to the Nokia 2.4, first impressions, it's quite tall and wide, with the gunmetal grey finish giving the phone an industrial look. Now, as I mentioned before, this plastic back has a grippy matte texture to it, giving it a nice in-hand feel. It is also pretty resistant against fingerprints and scratches. Still, for some weird reason, I just didn't like the in-hand feel. It's not like the phone's too heavy. And for a big phone, it's pretty well balanced too. Even the buttons are nicely positioned. But for some reason, when I picked up the Nokia 2.4, it felt like the edges were digging into my hands. And I just didn't feel comfortable. Speaking of edges, let's take a look around the phone. Up top, we have the secondary noise cancelling mic along with the headphone jack. Yes, we get that and FM radio too. To the left is the triple card slot. Below that is the Google Assistant button. And the bottom has the primary mic, micro USB and the speaker. As for the right, that's where we have the power button and volume rockers. The fingerprint sensor, that's to the back. By the way guys, we can swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to bring down the notification sheet. This is really handy because up front we have a massive 6.5 inch LCD panel. HMD Global has chosen to go with a 720p display here. It doesn't get all that bright either. So the end result, it ain't pretty. The resulting PPI is around 270. And that means text on the Nokia 2.4 looks kind of janky. Now, if you can somehow look past that, the colors seem okay and the weaving angles are decent. But hey, maybe it's just the display, right? Nope, the hits just keep on coming. The processor here is the Helio P22. Not the G80 or G85, but the Helio P22. That's the same chip that had been used in the Redmi 6, a phone that came out in 2018. Not to mention, at launch, the Redmi 6 costs just 8,000 rupees. Now, I wouldn't suggest it, but if you do want a game on the Nokia 2.4, we have the PowerVR GE8320 taking care of GPU duties. And in game or outside, the performance here is nothing to write home about. The only reason why the Nokia 2.4 is usable is because we have bone stock Android 10 on board. In fact, stock Android is possibly the only highlight here, as even the RAM and storage, well, we get a base 232 and a higher 364 GB variant. Now, I'm the first person who'd say that we don't need 12 gigs of RAM on a phone, but two gigs in 2020, that's just not gonna cut it. Till now, the Nokia 2.4 has been one disappointment after the other, but at least we have a decent sized 4500 mAh unit in here. Now, on one hand, we have a 720p screen and a not so powerful Helio P22 processor, but the 720p is stretched out across a large 6.5 inch panel, and the P22, thanks to its age, is based on the now ancient 12 nanometer package. To add to the woes, we have a paltry 5 watt charger, which would take quite some time to charge up that 4500 mAh battery. Now, software generally is the highlight of Android One devices. 
Here though, we could feel it lag and drop frames all over the place. Something as simple as scrolling through an app at times caused a stutter. That's not the fault of Android though. It's just that the hardware underneath is unable to keep up with it. So that promise of two years of Android updates, well, I just hope you can keep using this phone for that long. And well, at this point, it might just be kicking a dead horse, but Android 11 has been out for quite some time now. And the Nokia 2.4, it's still stuck on Android 10. By now, you guys might have noticed a trend. The hardware here on the Nokia 2.4 isn't the greatest. So I went into cameras with very low expectations. We have a dual camera set up to the back and the secondary, that's just a token two megapixel depth sensor. As for the primary snapper, that's a 13 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture lens. Under bright light, they can take decent enough pictures with bright colors. That being said, I did expect a bit more detail, even from a budget 13 megapixel snapper. The chip limitations though once more come to light on the video front. We can only capture 1080p footage from the Nokia 2.4. Turning it around for the selfies, we have a 5 megapixel snapper. And once more, the snaps fail to impress me. Even with beauty mode turned all the way off, they come out looking kinda soft. Honestly guys, the Nokia 2.4 is a one of a kind phone. Because in 2020, phones have become so good that even sub 20k devices can trade blows with an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And in the midst of that, we have a phone like this. A phone so underpowered that I don't really even need to review it. I can tell you guys right now, if stock Android isn't your top priority, do not buy this. Okay, so we don't have any official pricing from Nokia as of yet, but it doesn't really matter. Even under 10K, there are better options out there. Yes, they don't have stock Android on board and they probably won't get two years of updates either. But guys, you'd have to get a phone that can keep up for two years for you to enjoy those Android upgrades. And unfortunately, the Nokia 2.4 isn't one that can. That's my honest opinion about the Nokia 2.4. Now, I wanna know from you guys, what do you think? Not just about this device, but about HMD Global's track record in 2020. Do you think it's all right for a company to produce such subpar devices and then sell them based on the nostalgia factor? Or am I being too harsh here? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, like, share, subscribe, and oh, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end guys. Have a good one. Cheers.